What is up guys, again, Not The Worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we are taking a look at the Global Lab patch notes from August 12th, the latest ones out there. I'm sure you clicked on it because we got Sage Nurse included in this, which you saw on the title, which has been a hot topic, but personally, there is one other change that I like a bit more. Let's jump on in and see what we got going on. Guild changes, you're added uh, to be able to change the guild home server. Uh, we knew that was coming, so nothing uh, surprising there. And then the dev note talk about it, not super relevant. Red field, red battlefield changes. The minimap display of team and guild members that can be checked in the red battlefield content has been changed. Contents of the minimap display change depending on whether you are a member of your team or guild are as follows. Friendly team and guild members are white and enemy team are red. A little note on that. We've changed the minimap display method so you can clearly recognize the team you belong to and the opposing team on the red battlefield. In particular, in the past, it was difficult to recognize the enemy. It was a little more confusing when the guild members belonged, but now you can see it a little more clearly. Then we have node war and siege changes, which I don't think are a surprise. We are going to see lots of tweaks to these. We have all annex items used in node wars and conquest wars have been simplified just into one particular item. They've got a nice little dev note on this as well. All annexes can now be loaded with a single item. Previously, you had to prepare different items for each stage and store them in the guild warehouse, but now you can manage them with one item, the annex building construction tools. However, this item does not stack the same as existing items. Uh, we're hoping this update will be meaningful for adventurers who are preparing for node war and conquest wars. In addition, we're continuously looking for ways to make the process of preparing for node wars, including the annexes, more convenient and easier. Some adventurers gave us ideas for presets and remote installations, but we're also reviewing these aspects. However, it's not been decided yet, so we'll update it through the Black Desert Research Center once it's confirmed and development's complete. We look forward to your diverse opinions in the future. Uh, during Node and Conquest War, when the battle spirit gauge of the battlefield is 100%, effect that is visible only to allies has been added when using the battlefield protection skill. And when using that protection skill, the effect, uh, the effect effect is exposed once with the buff effect of the skill applied. Get a little graphic there as well. Uh, some methods of fighting spear gauge on the battlefield accumulated during node wars have been changed as follows. So before when you killed an enemy, it would decrease by 1%. Now when you kill an enemy, it decreases by 2%. Um, I don't conquest war myself, but I know people are pretty unhappy about this in general uh, because of the ability to kind of abuse this. Their dev note says they're trying to circumvent the abuse of this mechanic, but obviously it's going to take some trial and error to get there. Then we have some uh, UI quality life changes in the skill window. You can easily find black spirit skills and specialized skills as well as crowd control effects such as stun and stiffness and smash effects that were added. If you select a skill uh, filter type by clicking the upper left button in the list, the highlight effect is applied to the skill. This is super handy, especially when like uh, if I'm playing a new class for a season or something like that or a new class is just flat out released. Um, this looks pretty cool, so I'm sure for the new player aspect in general, this is amazing, especially if you're trying to get to a point where uh, you have your class you main, but then you want to kind of understand the mechanics of other classes and what their skills and stuff look look like, so you could look through all their protection skills, watch the little video, and kind of learn you know, the little video that pops up the skill usage, so that, this is a really handy tool, this is nice. I've got a button added to show or hide the durability gauge of the installed furniture when entering the dwelling. When retrieving the installed fence, an explanation text has been added. Uh, you, when you hover your mouse over the function button in the bottom left of the, the beauty window, a text has been added to guide the function of each button together. Beauty stuff, yada yada. Uh, following UI items that can be checked in the friends list window have been added, changed, and modified. Descriptive text has been added to the window separation for it. Added notification when there's a new friend request that that one's seven years late, but okay. Added descriptive text to the accept and reject button in the friend request list. When adding a friend, the name to be added has been changed to be entered according to the current character name slash family name view setting. Clicking on a friend message notification will open the main one-on-one -on -one conversation. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to laugh as I'm reading this because I'm just like, let's revamp the, the friend list. Like, I, it's been completely useless in this game. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I forgot it exists. I have like three people on my friends list and I've literally never used the friends list function for anything because it's just so bad in this game. So it's interesting that they're revamping it. I would honestly, I think I would have just removed it personally. Cause like, what does it do for you at this point? Um, but okay, it's happening. I mean, wh whatever it is, what it is. It just kind of makes me laugh when I'm thinking about that. Little dev note on some of the UI stuff. and some UIs, the size of the scroll button is small, and in the case of the mouse cursor, the recognition point did not exactly match the image of the mouse cursor. Therefore, there is a phenomenon that it does not seem to be recognized when the mouse is placed on the scroll button, etc., which has provided inconvenience to UI operation without knowing it. We'll continue to work hard to improve the convenience of both large and small so that you can enjoy the world, the black desert. Great. Uh, other changes. Um, so we have, uh, th there was one in here that seemed 
like it should have been fixed a long time ago as well but i'll read through a few of these phenomenon that the item acquisition interaction did not dis disappear intermittently even after the monster died has been fixed when using an item whose cooldowns expired phenomenon the item uh use does not proceed immediately and then this one i really noticed when playing season uh, servers this latest season here when setting up marnie stones on the collection count check ui where you can check the number of loot marnie stones etc collected the phenomenon that the number is not updated unless you acquire the item or open the bag has been fixed yeah super weird that was doing this i was trying to keep count of my marnie stones on my season character and i would literally have to open my inventory each time to get it updated and apparently it's been that way for a long time so yeah so Class changes, so I'm sure this is the one people are most excited for, but what I'm most excited for is this bad boy right here. The method of obtaining the power of the spirits from the Elvia server has been improved in the form of a buff rather than a weapon. You can now interact with the spirits of Okiara, Nark, and Voltara and select the desired shape, main, or awakening to receive the same spirit effect without changing the weapon. Uh, however, the buff duration is the same as before. When opening an attribute equipment box that can obtain the power of the spirit or reapplying a buff effect, while a buff effect is applied, the existing buff effect is deleted and the buff effect is renewed. And then they note that this particular graphic is just the development graphic that they're using and it's not finalized, um, but just something that they're working with. The reason why this is great, um, anyone that's grinded Elvia any amount of time, obviously it's annoying getting the weapon swap uh, cleanly, and there's especially if you're like, let's say, Bloody Monastery, and you have like four or five bells going, and then it's not so much equipping the weapon that's that big of a deal, because you can tab key to put your weapon away and then press R, and it's kind of fine, but when it's removing it, or if you happen to like equip your weapon the same time the game was removing automatically the Elvia weapon, then you'd equip your weapon, and it would automatically remove your weapon again. That stuff gets really, really, really annoying. Like I said, especially when you have like a bunch of bells running at the time. So there's all these mobs just like spawning on you. The other thing too, so this was like, I mean, I guess slight difference in duels, right? It has less accuracy than <clears throat> my uh, dual pen black stars do. So swapping to that's like eh, not super relevant, but it kind of felt like overall was, uh, you're being penalized. I don't know how many pen black stars you guys have, but when I equip a weapon with extra monster damage and then somebody else that has a like try black star and then Ted accessories across the board when they equip an Elvia weapon we have the same functional AP you know what I mean so it's like uh, uh, it, it brings your AP down from pen black star just the root the root AP to start with and then you're not getting the monster damage bonus either they did say in that uh, late night talk thing or whatever that they felt that the black star bonus effect would be too strong with the if they made it a buff for the Elvia weapon so they were looking at changing how the weapon equips uh, for it but obviously they they turned around on that it was also kind of silly i was just talking about last stream when i was grinding at bloody monastery i literally one shot packs with either the lightning or the fire since those are the uh, medium grade and high grade ones for bloody monastery um i one shot packs already without the black star so was the concern there like oh we don't want you to be able to one shot with the weak one at that spot the blue one as well which, by the way, I got my Pentongrad necklace uh, yesterday, and I can do that with the blue one as well now, too. But, like, it was just a silly comment, in my opinion, to where they're saying, oh, we think it'd be too strong. It's like, then why, I mean, then why is it in the game in the first place? It is obviously not a big deal, but a small annoyance to where it's like, hey, nice Pen Black Star, you don't get to use it because you're going to use this other weapon that brings your AP down. But, obviously, the bonus Elvia damage makes it worth it. So, very happy about that change. They do mention that uh, we're discussing further to improve the inconvenience of changing weapons in general. So like weapon to weapon or weapon to match lock. But please note that this part of uh, problems may occur with other content must be considered together. So please note that even if it takes time, we want to think about it carefully before proceeding. They also do note that this content will be applied to the official server immediately. So hooray for me. A uh, function to automatically use sprint when moving a character has been added. Nice little... Uh, function there then we got these massive dk buffs in the character creation and beauty window three types of faces with improved skin have been added you can see here before the improvement um it's yeah i mean just you can yeah you can see before and after the improvements uh, uh, they're pretty clear there so there's that uh, with Nova, we have, uh, when using Fuse Gravity skill, the amount of star's breath recovered per star has been reduced from 10% to 5%. The resource consumption of the Twisted Orbit and Excel Twisted Orbit have been changed as follows. Before consumes 30 mana, now consumes 100 stamina. Now, we have had an uh, interesting dev note on this as well. Some performance adjustments for Nova have been reflected in this Black Desert Lab. In particular, in the case of Awakening, in addition to the stamina recovery effect of Crushing Ring, there's no stamina consumption value for some mobile devices, so it was possible to move relatively freely, even with a relatively small stamina amount. This has a strong aspect of PvP only in the accelerated state at the beginning of Awakening, and as a complement to this, the use of various movement techniques was easy eased by, to strength 
strengthen the utility. However, as patches such as improved linkage of various technologies have been made even without acceleration, it's showing a stronger appearance than the initial intention. We decided that a little adjustment was necessary, so we changed the resource consumption of cross orbit from uh, holy power to endurance. Uh, they are talking about, they mean it's a twisted hour. We got a little translation thing here. <clears throat> resource consumption of twisted orbit from mana to stamina and changed to use it a little more carefully than before. In addition, starring, which can be counted on as a key awakening skill in PvP, is already showing strong performance in multiple battles with its own effect alone. However, there's a recovery amount of the Breath of the Star through gravity fusion, so it's judged that the linkage to other technologies, such as Singularity Breakthroughs, excessive, was adjusted to 5%. So now we have Sage, and I've seen tons of posts about this. Uh, there's a lot of molding Sages going on right now. Let's see what's happening with this class. Uh, first up, the text that can be used in Cabellia's status has been added to the description of the following skills. It's irrelevant. Uh, and for Awakening, critical strike chance of Lightning Prison has been changed to be PvE only. In the Bolt skill, character does not disappear, and the Invincible effect has been changed to the Super Armor effect. A uh, bug in which the attack was applied where the attack height of Lightning Prison and Flow Interrogate skill is higher than the height of the effect has been corrected. Issue fix on uh, Ador's energy uh, not being used, and also an issue fix there on interrogate. And for succession, the crit chance of the form sprint skill has been removed. And the note on this, along with Awakening Nova, the performance adjustment of Awakening Sage has been reflected in today's lab. First of all, in the case of flashing, it disappears from view when it's determined to be invincible. And after that, has a relatively strong performance that can be directly linked with other techniques to strongly suppress the opponent. Therefore, we've adjusted the character so that it does not disappear when using now spark and has also changed the invincibility judgment to super armor uh super armor status in addition we judge that the 100 percent critical strike of uh criminal thunder jade i love these translations man uh what was it uh lightning prison criminal thunder jade is too advantageous in many and <laughs> large scale battles and this effect has been removed the reason for completely removing it is it can be maintained at a fairly high level, even through residual buffs and skill specialization. So adjustment, adjustments about the parts that are decided to be relatively strong, just like the Awakening Nova. And adventurers who are playing Awakening Sage will test it out and then give us our, your opinion on it. Corsair, we have some issue fixes and bugs uh, to start out with because, as usual, we don't launch classes on the global labs anymore and just throw them right onto the main server, so we expected that. And then some actual tweaks. Damage distribution effect has been changed to apply in PvP situations when using uh, Captain's Order's open fire and ceasefire skills. Uh, the cooldown of Wind Piercer Patraka skill has been changed from 4 seconds to 6 seconds. Skill cooldown of Labo on deck changed from 10 minutes to 1 minute. Uh, Flow Earth Renderer Petraka skill has been added so that it can be activated by left clicking after the Sun Shielder Petraka. It's been improved so that Close Quarter Suppress is activated when you press down left click and Spare No Quarter skill is input. Improvements have been made to smoothly link to Crow's Mark skill after switching from Saranaka State to Petraka State by pressing C. And the bug that uh, Maraca Swing was not activated on water when using Maraca Swing in the Awakened State has been fixed. And while using flow wave skedaddle in awakening state, the bug in which the jump was activated first, even when the operation key of the skill was entered, has been corrected. So there we have it for this week on the Global Labs. Let me know what you guys think about the stuff uh, going on in the comments down below. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you get notifications when new videos do go live. And if you'd like to catch me playing live, there's a link to my Twitch page. You can jump on over there and drop a follow as well. With that said, that's going to be it for this one. I want to thank everybody for watching, and I will see you next time. Hey,